I was listening to a broadcast of, of uh, Walter Brueggemann, one of my favorite, my, one of my all-time favorite books is Odd to Heaven, Rooted to Earth, and he talks about the prophetic imagination and the importance of the prophetic imagination that when we approach uh, our communities with only sort of doc this doctrinal um, tradition, we lose, we squash the metaphor, the images. The, the Bible's full of poetry, and he talks about how poetry opens things up. It opens up our vision of God. When we flatten them out with sort of just coming at things with dogma and doctrine, um, the, he says it, it's, it becomes deathly, was his quote. And he says, we, if we want a God that's healthier than that, we need to sit with these images, um, make them part of our vocabulary, part of our conceptual framework. Let, let them inform us, like dwell with them, live with these images of, that, the, that the prophets and the, the poets of our day have given us about who God is. And, he, he talks about how poetry opens and, and sometimes our pursuit, if we pursue doctrine only, it, it closes us and, um, and it loses its transformative power. So I, I was drawn to songs that had this sort of, um, yeah, I was picking up a narrative about who God is, you know, you're talking about, um, in a, I mean, in a song like The Love of God, which is taken from an ancient rabbinic text, um, you know, were we to fill the, the ocean with ink, were every tree on earth a quill, were every single man on earth a scribe, we still would not be able to capture the great love of God. So just these unbelievable pictures and images. Um, I loved it in Ferris Lord Jesus, robed in the blooming garbs of spring, you know. Uh, it's basically mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest, you know. Um, Jesus is fairer, he's brighter, moonlight, starlight, twinkling starry hosts, all of it. So uh, there's a real beauty and transformative power in these poetic images.